and gets ready for a big league game. And I sort of can't ask for a better guy than Adam Wainwright to kind of take us through a little bit in terms of you know how what you're thinking about now, how much you're going to warm up in the outfield, and then when you get to the when you get to the bullpen mound, then then it's game face time. Yeah. Uh... I apologize for my rattlesnakeness that I might be putting out right here, but these uh, these Braves guys are getting loose right across from me, and I can't, you know, I can't be out here laughing and joking. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Understood. I gotta at least make them think like I'm mad. Do you have a set routine yeah. you go through in terms of warming up in the outfield? Yeah. Yes, sir. You got it. Yes, sir. I missed you, Tony. What did you say? Do you have sort of a set routine that you go through in the outfield? Like yeah. How many? You know, I'll tell you. In my earlier years, I would have never agreed to do this. I'll be honest. But I just get so many times I get asked about my warm-up routine because it's a little different. You know, I don't I don't spend as much time long tossing and warming up. But when I was in Double A, I had a real trouble, a real hard time getting the ball down, throwing a lot of high pitch count innings, a lot of a lot of balls up in the zone, a lot of arm side misses and every time on the mound after that the, after the last game I really struggled like probably through the beginning of May my double-a pitching coach Mike Alvarez had me just throw off the mound so I'm about to get on the mound right here and just work on throwing the ball down downhill because uh, I'm a downhill pitcher so I don't make my money up in the zone I've already done a lot of stuff inside to get my body loose so we're just gonna get on the mound we're gonna have some fun but just remember, you young pitchers out there, I get this in the big leagues and the minor leagues and little leagues too. Warming up is just warming up. Don't put too much into it, you know what I mean? You're throwing the ball in the dirt, you're throwing the ball high. Does not mean you're going to do that in a game. I hear a lot of people say, well, I knew I wasn't going to pitch good because I warmed up like crap. And that's just not the way it is. All we're doing today is getting loose, just getting our body warm, preparing to go out and dominate. Fall in love with the process, not the result. Yeah, I don't have any Velcro, though. You got a Velcro? I guess I'll just stick it in there for now. Well, we know you're getting ready to get, get your routine going. Is there any amount of, you know, uh, set fastballs you throw or curveballs, or are you just getting your body loose, like you said, and then you're good to go when you feel it? Yeah, I mean, it's... Let me pick the right ball here. It's always a, there's always a system, right? There's a, there's a certain amount of pitches that I'm around every time, but it doesn't have to be the same every time. You know, if, you, if, you're, a, if you're a robot to the exact same thing every time, there's gonna be games here and there where it doesn't happen exactly the same and then you feel mentally defeated. And that's not the way pitching is. If it's a hot day, I might throw five, six less pitches. And also, I know these guys behind me, these pitching coaches, they have a little game going with themselves and trying to guess how many pitches I'm going to throw pregame. So just to mess with them without them knowing it, I might change the end of the routine up just a little bit every now and then, just to keep them on their toes. I don't want to get too cocky, you know what I mean? There you go. You got to keep modest. Right there, I worked up close, worked on downhill. All this is right here, this whole warm-up routine, this whole warm-up routine is all about getting loose. How much do you pay attention to your alignment? Well, I'm paying attention to every little movement, so I want the ball coming off my hand exactly the same. Even in my bullpens between starts, I don't throw very hard. I had a lot of teammates over the years go, Man, how do you get anything out of that, you know? But I came up in the Brave system. We threw two bullpens between starts. And you had to, what it did is it taught you how to really learn your delivery. It taught you how to learn your delivery at a slow speed. And if you can do it at slow speed, you can do it fast. If you can't do it slow, you can't do it fast. So, you know, all my bullpens, pre-game or even between, or right before the start, all I'm doing is trying to get my arm in the right spot, trying to get the timing down, trying to get the spin right. I'm hoping this right here brings a little excitement to our game of baseball. Because I love when they do this kind of stuff in the NFL. Yeah, this is great. I mean, you're taking us inside to 
a warm-up routine before a big league game. You've been around, you're making your 384th career start in the big leagues. You know what you're doing down there, and you're sharing it with a lot of young kids out there who want to see how you go about doing your job, getting ready for a big game. Yeah, I got wires on me. I can't hear y'all very good. How about now? Say something now so I can tell if I can hear you again. Yeah, when when do you when do you know that you, that uh, you're ready to start taking it up a notch? Maybe breaking off some curveballs, fastballs to each side of the plate, and then you get into it. Yeah, I work on all fastball command at first, and just trying to get that timing down. <laughs> trying to get that timing down where I'm really locating on both sides of the plate, locating the ball down, locating the ball up when I want, in out, up down. <laughs> I move on to spin after that. It's about I do about. Uh, do about five fastballs each side. And then I go back on uh, glove side for three more sinkers. Now we got to do this anthem real quick. No, if I had to say, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. If I had to say one thing to the people at home watching today. It would be a two-part answer. One, get a routine so that you can trust that process like I talked about a few minutes ago. Get a routine, something that works for you, something that gets you loose. This one works for me. I've been doing it a long time. But a routine is great as long as it doesn't come, become superstition. If you're out there thinking you've got to do exactly the same thing every time to have success, then that's, that's making you a weaker competitor. If they told me right now that I had eight pitches to get loose, I could do that. Because you are what your brain tells you you are. I love that. You've got your routine. There's no panic. You know exactly what you need to do to get ready. It's not like you're going to sit down there and throw 35 curveballs because you don't like the spin. You know it, you trust it, and you take it to the mound. You trust that it's going to be. That's right. I mean, how many golfers are out there? Hit a little draw on the range and hit a cut on the, on the, on the real thing. Right. <laughs> Cutter right there stays right there. They're gonna be trouble. Oh. Nice. Cutter, sinker, curveball, little change up. Fastball, we go fastball, and we go two seam. Same side of the plate, different action. But you never know, these Braves guys might be walking, watching over there, so. We're not gonna give away no trade secrets, nothing like that. Yeah, I ain't giving any scouting reports. Dottie's down there with you the whole time though, right? Well, Snit, no, you know, Snit, Snit was my double A manager. I, he's smart, man. I gotta, you know, you gotta be, gotta be careful around him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think the moral to the story is, is that when I was a young pitcher, that I panicked sometimes warming up. And you said it all right there. It's that there's no panic. You're down there to get your body loose. You have your routine. You're not a slave to your routine. But you know what you need to do, and you're going to trust that it's going to be there when you get to the game now. That's right. Here's the other thing about being a starting pitcher at home. You know, in a game like this, rain delay, they told me I had at least an hour. It ended up being like 40 minutes, 40, 42 minutes maybe. And uh, so it happened fast. You know, you got every reason to make excuses and all that kind of stuff, but you stay ready. And when these games happen, you're the home starter. Guess what they can't do? They can't start without you, baby. That's right. We're on your time right now. Especially when you're 40. <laughs> it's okay to be fashionably late. You know, take your time. You're good. <laughs> yeah, anybody knows me. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't call it fashionable, but I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> All you pitchers at home laughing at me too because I'm grunting on 88. <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> Is 
see, I'm not gonna throw a cutter the last pitch. See whose number I throw off. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's go. Let's get him. Let's get him. some. That was great, Adam. That you you did something there nobody's seen before, and on, a go. lot of kids are gonna love what they saw. Thing, you let's do go time, baby. I'm gonna have to unplug, guys. I can't hear you anyways. Have a great one. Thank you.